Welcome to a Faithful God Podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Rotzel, and today on the show, we're going to talk about how to trust in God's timing. So grab those earbuds and your favorite beverage and join me for today's show. Well, hey, my friend, welcome back. Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week. Listen, today we're going to talk about how to trust in God's timing. Let's face it, we live in a world where everything, we're getting everything instantly. You know, the fast food, Amazon, in a world with Amazon where we get our orders in one to two days. And, you know, it's it's really... Um, it's really just kind of decreased our ability or our, I guess I should say it's increased our impatience and decreased our patience. I don't know if I just said that right. I'm not even sure. But anyway, it, we're, we're growing more and more impatient as a society for sure. And I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm like that as well. And so, it, and especially true, like when we are praying and we're praying for something and it doesn't happen the way we want it to, man, that's tough, isn't it? We want it to happen and we want it to happen right now. When we pray for it, we want it to happen right now. So today we're going to talk all about that in the show. So listen, wherever you are, uh, be sure to, whether you're listening on your favorite podcast player or you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the show. And I just want to let you know, especially those of you, well, all of you actually, where, wherever you're watching or listening to the show, but you'll have to forgive me. I have, um, you see me messing with my eye if you're watching on YouTube. I, um, the, spring has sprung here uh, where I am in the Southeast. And um, one of <laughs> things is that uh, the pollen, I don't know if you've never been to this area, I'm sure there are plenty of other areas also in the world or in the U.S. where this pollen, probably in the world, I don't know, but where this pollen gets so heavy. I'm, I'm talking when in the spring, the pollen gets so bad. And though we haven't seen it yet, I know it's coming because I can feel it. So I'm going to try really hard not to sniffle today. My eye, especially my left eye, is watering like crazy. So if you see that happening, forgive me. It is what it is. We're going to keep rolling with it. Um, I just wanted to make sure I got this podcast episode out recorded and out to my editor so that we can get it out to you. But uh, yeah, again, if you've never been here where, where I am, them, the pollen gets so thick like you see it it's just a yellow green cake on all of your like outdoor furniture your cars uh, like everything and as much as we love the spring that can be a really challenging time and I've noticed even with my boys they're both starting to feel it too they both have allergies they have asthma they uh, although my oldest is doing much much better with it uh, than he I mean a lot better with it actually um, but when they were younger they actually had nebulizer treatment so those those little masks and we'd hook them up and we'd watch uh, or we'd read books together while while they would take their nebulizer treatments from very, very early on. I'm talking infant, like months old. We had to do that with both of them. So, so yeah, so this is the season. It, the pollen isn't sitting on our furniture just yet, but uh, it's coming and I can feel it. So anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you. If you see me doing that, forgive me. I'm going to try not to sniffle too much. I'm not going to try not to rub at my eye, but uh, listen, Again, this week, or, or excuse me, in today's show, we're going to talk about that uh, waiting, right? How to trust God in the waiting, how to trust in his perfect timing, because we sit there and we pray for things and we pray for things, even things that we know God is asking us to pray for, when that we felt clearly God saying, I want you to pray for this. And we've prayed and we've prayed, we prayed, especially in those times we think to ourselves, well, then why isn't he answering yet? Why aren't we seeing what we're praying for, right? Uh, why is he not um, listening to what we're saying? Is, you know, did I hear him right? You know, all that self-doubt starts to come in and everything. So we're going to talk about that today. So listen, um, if we want to experience peace in the pain, if we want to stop worrying and stressing about everything in our lives, we've got to learn to trust in God's timing. I know this isn't easy. I'm going to walk you through it today. In fact, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what, or excuse me, understanding. We're going to first talk about understanding God's perspective. You see, we've got to change our perspective and, and, and actually uh, 
turn our focus to God's perspective in order to help us trust in his perfect timing. We're also going to talk about what happens, excuse me, what happens in the midst of our waiting, like what's going on while we're waiting. Is God just sitting up there twiddling his fingers, you know, oh, we'll just wait on that for a little while. We're going to talk about that just a little bit more because obviously, you know, that's not happening, right? We're also going to talk about how to walk it out because let's face it, we are very impatient people. We want things and we want them right now. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with how to pray the importance, number one, the importance of prayer while you're learning to trust in God's perfect timing and also how to pray in his perfect timing. And you know, I've got you, my friend, I've put together a free resource. It's guided prayers to learn how to trust in God's timing. I've got that free uh, a free sheet for you with those guided prayers, and I'll tell you how to get your hands on that at the very end. So in Isaiah 55, eight through nine, this is what it says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than yours. You see, we can't look from, or excuse me, we can't look at God's timing from our own perspective. Our perspective is, um, is often, um, excuse me, based on biases, emotions, feelings, circumstances. We can't look at, at, at God's timing through the lens of all of that. We have to look, learn to look at God's timing and accept God's timing, right? Embrace his timing for, uh, uh, and again, in, in that, uh, in what Isaiah teaches us is that his, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. We have to understand that, or we've got to learn to embrace and accept that his timing, that his ways are always better than, than ours. So we've got to learn how to look at this from his perspective. So how do we do that? It goes back all the way to the beginning. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know what I'm about to say. It's not about us. Life is not about us. We were created to make God known and bring him glory. That's our ultimate calling. And so when we look, when we we turn our focus back on that and we remember that this is about God, and bringing him glory, right? This is about God and his purpose and plans, not just in our lives, but in the lives of all of those around us, in the lives of the world. And so when we're learning to trust in his timing, we've got to remember that we've, that again, it goes back to his ways, his thoughts, and um, all the things that he has planned. It's like this big, massive, I mean, massive, massive puzzle. Think of a puzzle probably as big as the United States, probably even bigger, okay? Um, But this massive, massive puzzle, as big as the United States or bigger, and what we're praying for, what we're wanting, what we're desiring is one little piece in that puzzle. And you see what has to happen is all these other little pieces and parts need to come together first before our piece fits into that puzzle. Does that make sense? You see, we've got to understand that, yeah, we want it done. We want to put that puzzle piece down right now because we just want, we want, we want to know that everything's going to be okay and that everything's going to be under control. And, and, you know, all the things that we try to do to control and manipulate the situations around us. And I don't mean that in an ugly way. I mean that in a, I just want to feel peaceful kind of way. Right. And so we've got to understand that the, that, our perspective, there's so much more going on that we can't see, that we don't know. And so we have to strive to look at this through God's perspective, not our own lens, but through his lens. In Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11, it says this, 
God has also given us a desire to know the future. God certainly does everything at just the right time, but we can never completely understand what he is doing. Now, let me take a step back for just a moment. That's from the International Children's Bible, that translation. I have to tell you, this is kind of a side note, but I love this translation because what does it do? It teaches us like we're children. Like it it teaches or talks to us like we're children. And I don't know about you, but quite frankly, sometimes I need scripture. I need to have scripture dumbed down a little bit for me. I just need, just explain it to me just a little bit better. And that's why I absolutely love this translation of the Bible. Um, And by the way, when you're reading scripture, if you're not looking at different translations of the Bible, you're totally missing out, my friend. I know this is a side note. This is kind of off on a little tangent here, but you're missing, you're missing so much. You are leaving so much on the table when you don't look at by at scripture through other translations. Now you don't have to have a bunch of different translations of Bibles at your house, you, you know, in your own possession. You don't have to in our back pocket now so easy pull up a bible app and read that same verse in different translations it really helps to solidify it helps to give you the context of what that verse is and really helps to really get down to the meat of what that bible verse means so that again just a little side note there but it's such a phenomenal the icb is such a great translation for really for me, I'm speaking for me. I don't know if any of you are out there who need it dumbed down just a little bit. Or, and I shouldn't say dumbed down, but just just speak to me like I'm a child. Explain it to me like I'm a child. And so this is such a great version for that. So let me read it to you one more time. God has also given us a desire to know the future. God certainly does everything at just the right time, but we can never completely understand what he is doing. You see, our perspective is limited. We're not going to understand everything that's going on. He's given us a desire to know the future, to know what's going to happen, but we also have to learn to trust in his timing. You see, what happens is, uh, and we're going to get into this more in just a little bit, but what happens is that when we're trusting we're choosing to trust in his timing that's drawing us closer to god that's allowing us to rely on him which is what he wants here's the thing my friend i don't know about you but when you really take and look at this i mean so often we just want to know how it's going to play out when it's going to happen right wouldn't that be nice if we understood if we knew just when it was going to happen but the thing is is when if if we knew all those details if god gave us every one of those details we wouldn't rely on him for everything that we need. And that's not what God intended. He created us to rely on him, to go to him. And so if we aren't learning to trust in his perfect timing, we'll never rely on him. We'll never go to him for our source of all that we need, everything that we need. So we've got to learn to trust in his timing by 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 allowing and surrendering the fact that we don't have to know it all. And honestly, if you really think about it, I know it's really hard at first, you know, that control issue. I just need to know how it's going to play out. But the beautiful thing is, is when we start to flip that switch and we start to just say, you know what, Lord, I surrender to you. I don't know what, when or how this is going to play out, but I trust you to do that. And again, we're going to get into this just a little bit more in a moment. But when we do that, it allows us, again, it it allows us, it takes the pressure off of us of having to know all the things. I don't know about you, but that gives me so much peace knowing that, yeah, my God's got it. I don't have to sit there and worry about this. I don't have to fret over it. I don't have to sit there and gosh, just try to control the situation because God's got it. He's going to take care of it for us. So what's the difference between our perspective and God's perspective? Our perspective is based on emotions. It's based on biases, like I talked about just a little bit ago. It's based on biases. It's based on um, our feelings. It's based on incomplete pictures. Whereas God's perspective is on the complete picture. He knows 
all. He knows how it's going to play out. He knows that in order for this to happen, what we're praying for to happen, this has to come into place and this has to come into place. And that piece has to fit in there first. And that piece has to fit in there. Then right after that, he's got it all figured out and he's got the entire picture. Our picture again is based on feelings, emotions, biases, and an incomplete picture. So we have to learn to say, oh, okay, I'm going to pray for this. I'm going to trust you in this. And I'm going to choose to wait on your perfect timing for it to play out. And I'm going to learn to find some peace in that. So what happens in the waiting? What happens while we're waiting for God's perfect timing? In James chapter one, verses two through four, it says this. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You see, you see excuse me, God uses this time of waiting to build our endurance. He uses this time of waiting to refine us, to shape us, and to mold us for what it is we're praying for. A lot of times what we're praying for may not be, we may not be ready for it. And so he's waiting for that perfect time. He's waiting. He's using this time of waiting so that you will draw closer to him so that he can shape and mold you, refine you, so that you're ready for all that you're praying for. He uses this time as a, a, as a way to build up your endurance and reliance on him. And he uses this time to also align our thoughts with his. Because there are times, there are plenty of times that what we're praying for really isn't that good for us. It's really not what he has planned for us. It really doesn't uh, fit. I mean, from our perspective, yeah, it, it looks like something that we really want. And it looks like something that would be so good for us. But God knows, right? His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He knows what's best for us. And sometimes in that waiting, he's using it to align your hearts and your, or your heart and your thoughts with his. You see, sometimes even when God tells us to pray for something, even when we feel God saying, I want you to pray for this, we still may need that time. Uh, 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 let me, how am I trying to say this? We will see it from our own perspective, right? From our own biases, our own emotions, our own feelings. And sometimes, even though he wants us to pray for that situation, our thoughts may still not be completely in alignment with his. Sure, we're going in that right direction, but we're not on the right path yet. And so he'll use that time of waiting to get you back on his path to get and align your thoughts and your hearts with his make sense so again that time of waiting is to um, prepare you it's to help you learn to rely on him to build your endurance to sharp, shape and to mold to or sharpen and mold and to really prepare you for what you're praying for and sometimes it's to align your thoughts with his so while you're waiting and we're going to get into this a little bit more but while you're waiting you are in the moment saying lord if i'm not praying just in the way you want me to realign my thoughts in my heart my heart and my thoughts realign my thinking so that I'm in tune with your plan, with your will, your desires. Because even though sometimes he asks us to pray for something and we're still waiting for it, it could be that we're still not praying quite in alignment with his. This is something I teach inside Confident Prayer Warrior, how to really work and nurture a relationship with God and learn how to pray according to his will and use that time to, um, to really uh, get into alignment with God. Something we have to remember is that in the waiting, even when we can't see God working, he's still working. We don't have to see it to know that he's still working. God doesn't stop working, my friends. He's not up there twiddling his thumbs. He's not up there um, trying to figure out how it's going to play out. It's already been done. He already has it. So 
in that time, we have to choose to stand on what we know to be true, that God is always working, right? We have to choose to stand on that. We don't stand on our feelings of inadequacy. We don't stand on our feelings of, oh, God's not working, right? We can't see it, so he must not care about us. We we don't see it, so gosh, must he must not be listening. No, he's still working. It's just sometimes we can't see what's going on. And that's okay. We don't have to always see, right? This is how we learn to build up our endurance and our trust in God and his sovereignty, his, our trust in his truths that are found all throughout the Bible. Here's the thing, my friend. We can't know the depth of our character until we sit and wait, patiently wait for God's perfect timing. Does that make sense? We can't understand or learn the depth of our character until we've been tested a little bit, until we've been tested enough to say, or tested in a way that shows that, yeah, we're going to choose to trust God. We're, we're going we're gonna to go the whole way. We're not going to, you know, fall off the sidelines here. We're going to choose to remain steadfast. Until we are tested in that way, tested in waiting on his timing, we can't know the depth of our character. So what does this involve? This involves surrendering. You've probably already guessed this based on everything I'm saying. We have to surrender our timing for his. We have to surrender our thoughts for his. We have to surrender our desires for his. Again, I teach this all inside Confident Prayer Warrior. I go very deep into it and we're learning to surrender what we want for his so that he can allow, or excuse me, so that, or, or excuse me, when we're surrendering, it allows God to change, change us from the inside out. It allows him the time to um, mold us, shape us, prepare us. It allows him to align our thoughts more fully with him. Friend, we have to keep pursuing God. We have to, in the timing, we don't give up or in the waiting, not the timing, in the waiting, in waiting for his perfect timing, we don't give up, my friend. We keep on waiting with patience and composure, right? That's uh, Romans. I didn't put that in the, uh, this outline, but Romans chapter 20 or chapter eight, I believe it's verse 28. But we, when we're waiting for something we have not yet seen, I'm totally, totally going off the cuff with, with this Bible verse, but we wait for it with patience and composure. This is how we do that. By choosing to surrender our desires for his, by choosing to inviting, inviting him in and allowing him to change us from the inside out so that we, so that our thoughts then begin to align with his. Make sense? So now that we know that we have to really take on and focus, turn our focus onto God's perspective and learn what happens in the waiting, right? That God is still working. It's not that he's not doing anything. He's doing a lot behind the scenes that we can't see. We now, or excuse me, now what do we do to walk it out, right? Well, that's all well and good. It's one thing to know it, but it's another thing to walk it out, right? Especially when we're feeling impatient, especially when we're feeling desperate. Yeah, desperate. That word just came to me and someone needed to hear that today, especially when we're feeling desperate in our situations, right? When we desperate for what we're pray praying for, how do we actually walk this out? My friend, a Bible verse that I have no doubt has been, that's been watered down for you over the years. It, it was for me many, 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 many years. I had to take a good look at it with fresh eyes here. Uh, excuse me, I'm messing with my eyes again. Sorry, as you can see on YouTube. Yeah, the allergy, I'm telling you. But anyway, um, we have to look at this and uh, we have to look at Jeremiah 29, 11 with fresh eyes. And this is what it says. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a hope, or excuse me, to give you a future and a hope. You see, we have to choose to surrender. We know that God, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God's plans for us, they are exact. He knows the plans that he has for us. They're for good, a future and a hope, and not for disaster. 
Are they going to be easy? No, not necessarily. We've talked about this time and time and time again in the podcast. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that life is going to be easy when we're walking close to God. But nothing, God will not let anything destroy us, truly destroy us. And so what we do when we're trying to walk it out, when we're trying to wait on God's perfect timing, we go back to Jeremiah 29, 11 and remind ourselves that Ah, God's plans are good for good. They're they're to give me a future and a hope. And they're his plans with his timing. And so I'm going to choose in this waiting to trust in him. I'm going to surrender, like I said earlier, I'm going to surrender my desires for his desires. I'm going to invite God in and allow him to change me, to align my thoughts, my heart, and my heart, excuse me, with his will with what he truly wants. You see, we've got to be open and willing for God to change us. The longer we stubbornly think of our own ways, I'm trying to think of the way to say this, the longer we sit here and think and pray this only this one way, Lord, I want this, I want this, I want this, the longer that waiting is going to be. You've got to ask God to give you his perspective. You have to ask God to, or excuse me, you have to surrender and then ask God, invite him in and say, Lord, change me. If my desires are not your desires, change me, Lord, right? One of the most important things you can ever pray, change me, Lord. Align my thoughts with yours, Lord, right? Again, it goes back to It's not about us. It's about God and his ultimate calling for our life. In Psalm chapter 27, verse 14, it teaches us this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Super simple, my friend. How do we wait on his timing? We take courage. In other words, what that means is we we, we get determined. We are intentional. We are purposeful. We are adamant like uh, um um what am i tra- what is the word i'm trying to say we are steadfast that's what i'm trying to say we are steadfast in choosing to trust god right this isn't a feeling my friends you know i've said this time and time and time again trusting god and his perfect timing is not a feeling it's a choice and it's a choice we have to make every single day are we going to grow weary sometimes absolutely we are we're not perfect we are not perfect. We are going, going to grow weary from time to time. But that in, in those weary moments, that's when we choose to invite God in more. That's when we go in and we say, Lord, I'm growing impatient. You, you, friends, you do not have to sugarcoat your prayers with God. He doesn't want you to sugarcoat them. Tell him what you're feeling. Tell him what you're experiencing. Lord, I'm growing impatient. Grant me patience, Lord, while I wait on your perfect timing. I trust, I'm choosing to trust you, your plans for me, and your perfect timing. So help me walk this out with endurance, with strength, with courage, and with peace. With peace. Friend, we've got to surrender and allow God to change us from the inside out while we're waiting for his perfect timing. And what do we do? I've said it over and over and over again throughout this episode. We pray. We get persistent and consistent in our prayers. I absolutely love the passage in the Bible in Luke uh, chapter, it's chapter 18 uh, verses one through eight. What, this is about the persistent widow, right? We, we have to become just like the persistent widow in this parable. Now I'm going to read right from the Bible here. So I'm going to just kind of be looking down as I'm looking right from the Bible. But this is where this, this widow um, had some injustices done to her. And she goes to this judge who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't um, and does not like people. It, it says right in the Bible, you know, none of those things. The widow asks for justice and the, and the judge tells her no, but she's persistent and consistent in this. And this is what it says. I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm just going to look down and read from my Bible here just a little bit. But in verse three, it says a widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. 
The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, ready? I don't fear God or care about people, Mm. but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Now, granted, his heart was definitely not in the right place, was it? But here's what I love is God even takes this or Jesus even takes this and uses this parable as something so incredibly powerful. And this is what he says um, in uh, starting in verse six. He says this, then the Lord says, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Let me repeat that again. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? To be persistent in prayer doesn't mean we have to do this endless repetition of the same thing, same thing, same thing over and over and over again. Yes, we're called to to um, to keep going to God with our requests, right? To, to continually go to him with our requests. But it doesn't mean lo- it has to be long prayer ses- sessions on this. It can be, most definitely. I want you to understand that. And But it doesn't have to be the same exact words over and over and over again. What being persistent and consistent in prayer means is staying close to God through prayer. It means bring, inviting him into our situation and 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 yes, making our requests known and letting him know, Lord, you know, I'm struggling right now. I'm struggling to be, you know, persistent in this because I'm losing hope, but I know I can keep my hope in you. I know I can find my hope in you. You being persistent and consistent in prayer means that constant communication with God. Now we've talked about this many of times, um, uh, on the podcast. And again, I go d- deeper into it in uh, Confident Prayer Warrior. But what we've got to do is remember that, um, sorry, my eye is really messing up today. I've got, it just feels like there's something in it. Sorry about that. But when we're persistent and consistent in prayers, it's inviting God into all of our activities throughout the day. It's letting him know our our uh, concerns. It's letting him know our, gosh, just our frustrations, our worries, our cares, and it's inviting him into our lives and into everything that we are doing. So we've got to be just like the persistent widow. We've got to keep going back again and again and again. Jesus himself teaches us right here in, in Luke that we can and should Be as persistent as the persistent widow. Friend, we keep going. We stay persistent. We 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 um we we learn to or or, excuse me, choose to trust God and his perfect timing in this. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's not easy. We have to let go of that unrealistic expectation that just because we're following God, it's going to be super easy and we're going to be able to, you know, never, ever have a care in the world again. We're never, ever going to worry or fret or wonder why he's not answering our, our, um, our, you know, our prayers just yet. No, we bring all that to God throughout this. That's how we grow closer to God. That's how we learn to trust him while we're waiting, right? To trust in his perfect timing. And also when we're praying, we show up and pray with expectancy. We show up and pray with expectancy. What does that mean? That means we show up expecting to hear or for God, or excuse me, for God to answer our prayers. May not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but we, we, we show up with an expectant heart in prayer. And that is so important, my friend. As long as we're staying connected to God through prayer, we can show up. And, and, and let me back up. As long as we, you know, we're, we're staying connected to God through prayer, as long as we are saying, Lord, align my heart with yours, right? My thoughts with yours. We can go to God and show up that we can expect to hear and and get the answers that we're praying for. Is it always going to be exactly what we're praying for? No, it's not. But as God starts to move in and through you, 
He's going to start aligning you so that your hearts, your prayer, your heart, excuse me, I always keep saying hearts, but your heart and your prayers will align with his will for your life. You've just got to be persistent and consistent, just like that persistent widow. All right, my friends. So today we talked about the importance of, of, um, excuse me, looking and seeing from God's perspective. We talked about the importance of waiting and how God uses that waiting to shape us and mold us and align our thought, thoughts and our heart with him. We also talked about how to walk this out by remaining steadfast, right? By choosing to trust in his perfect timing. And we talked about how, or excuse me, remaining persistent and consistent, just like that persistent widow uh, in the parable in uh, Luke. So friends, I promised you a guided prayer sheet to help you pray while you're waiting, to help you pray to learn to trust God while you're waiting. You can hop on over to footprintsofinspiration.com slash prayers for waiting. That's footprintsofinspiration.com slash prayers for waiting. If you're driving around, don't even worry about it. I've got it in the show notes, so don't even worry about it. You can hop over and grab those right from the show notes. Um, I, uh, like I said, I put these together. You guys can print them off, put them in your Bible. You can put it in your purse. You can put it um, on the dashboard of your car. You put it wherever you want and as many places as you want just to help you pray these prayers as you're waiting and learning to trust in God's timing. Friend, I hope this episode blessed you today. I know how difficult it is to wait. I know that we get impatient and we want what we want and we want it now. But something I want to leave you with that is so incredibly important, I really, really want you to hear me. I want you to learn to be present in the moment. Yes, God created us, which we talked about earlier today. Uh, we, God created us with that desire for the future, but we also want to, and he also wants us to live right here in the moment. You see what you're living in right now, this very day, this very moment, those are things you were praying for a while ago. Take some time to enjoy that. Enjoy that instead of being anxious about what's to come and when it's going to happen. Enjoy what God's given you already in the moment. These are the very things you were praying for before and you're living them in the moment right now. In fact, I want to hear from you. If you're watching on YouTube, comment below and let me know. If you're not, if you're listening on your favorite podcast player, I want you to send me a DM and let me know what is the one thing that now that you're that you've heard this, I want you to take a moment, stop and look around you. See what's going on in your life right now and let me know what it is that you're experiencing, the blessing that God has given you that you were praying for, right? Now, again, keep in mind, it may not be exactly the way you were praying for it. Maybe it's always going to be better. Like always, always, always it's going to be better. Hands down, no doubt about it. But so I, so it may not be have been answered and likely won't have been a- answered exactly the way you were praying for it, but I want to hear what it is. So again, send me a DM on social media or leave me a comment below in uh, on YouTube. And listen, friend, if this episode blessed you today, it is my mission to get this out to as many people as uh, or many women as possible. I want to help women just like you learn to really gosh, just grow closer to God through prayer and Bible study and learning how to take God's word and apply it to their life. This life isn't easy. This life is hard, but it is possible to experience peace in the midst of the pain. And that's what I want for each and every one of you. So if this episode blessed you today, would you do me a favor and share it with a friend? I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Just take a screenshot or wherever you're watching, grab the link and text it to a friend or share it on social media. It would mean the world to me. It is my mission to get this this out there to as many women as possible and to grow this um, to grow this podcast so that I can do that. So I would really, really appreciate it if you do that. And listen, friend, wherever you're listening, don't forget to subscribe to the show. And then I will meet you back here next week for another episode of a Faithful God podcast.